Thank you. Mr. Rainwater, with respect to the questions that Senator Murray asked, did you commission the CHAF report for the Office of Group? Yeah, yes, ma'am. The idea was to make sure that we understood what the uh, what that book of business looked like. And there had been, you know, we've there have been several analysis done back in the 80s and 90s. And so we just felt like that as we move forward in the RFP process and and, you know, decision, I mean, we've talked about, you know, this privatization of the office group benefits and this book of business. Uh, and to understand before we even went out for an RFP, which is basically, or not even an RFP, it's really a solicitation for offers. Um, and to evaluate that, we wanted to make sure that we understood that the numbers were the numbers. I understand. And, yes, I ma understand there's probably value in having the report. Do you think it would be helpful for Mr. Kipper to have it? Uh, I think so, but I mean, I think the, I mean, what, what's happened to us, and you know, this is a, a report that we just really completed. We we took a look at it from our perspective, from a much broader perspective than Mr. Kipper. His job has been to uh, work the RFP for the financial advisor, which is the is the group that will come in and help us, you know, work this, put the solicitation up for offers together. He's been at the more tactical level and trying to learn the business and trying to learn and understand the organization. I understand so. that, but with respect to Senator Jackson's question. Not to, I don't, you know, I'm asking yes, no specific questions. And I don't want to get into policy matters too much. Yes, ma'am. Confirmation hearing, but transparency. It's about transparency and certainly information that's helpful with one of the uh, top folks in the administration would be to have as much information as possible. I don't don't disagree with that at all. We've been going through. Be the appropriate time to share the report with the CEO of the Office of Group. Uh, I think we've been going through a transition, and so my job is to make sure that he has the ability. And what we try to do is split up what uh, what pieces we have. Our Deputy Commissioner Mark Brady and and my Chief of Staff Dirk Thibodeau have been focused on one piece, allowing Mr. Kipper to focus on another piece. Those are decisions that I made as a leader to say, okay, this is what we need to do to to kind of get to that point. So that's and I. I, he will get the information, obviously, but I think that at the well, at a particular time. Well, it's not obvious, though. It's not well, but it is, it, it, and so as a leader, you make decisions, and that's a decision I made to divide up what people needed to do and what they needed to focus on so that we could accomplish things, because we're also doing this in the middle of the session. And but so you're saying that you wanted a report before making a decision to do something major with the de department. Yes, ma'am, it was so more of a... Why more, would the CEO of the department not want to report before doing something major with his it was, department? It was more of a validation of what we already thought, and the numbers came back as we thought they would, and so... I, I, the, the, had I'm not the arguing with you. I'm oh, yes, saying, at what had the re what should he have? Had the report changed something, I thought it would have been important to say, hey, you need to look at this. It's just that, you know, folks at top levels of departments should have as much information as possible and then we rely on them to be independent thinkers and we are looking in this hearing at character and judgment right and so how can I have confidence in confirming anybody if I can't count on their character and judgment and their ability to, with their integrity and their ability to be transparent in processes notwithstanding the issue and so transparency is something that is touted by the administration and to withhold information to what I believe is a key department official with a measure that's moving through this legislative process that is something that we might have to do, we as a body may have to vote on, is significant if that is the policy of this administration, that certain people in key positions will be, uh, there will be information withheld. This is just one example. If it's, if it's something that a philosophy I'm trying to figure that out is that they're going to be silos and people who are at the t top level positions are not going to be provided all the information to make the best decision because someone else is I'm just trying to understand that I'm not trying to talk specifically about this issue anymore I'm talking about a policy a philosophy no I don't think there's a, a, a policy of silos in fact what I've tried to do is flatten out the organization but in this particular case, because of the timelines that we had to meet and because we've got a, a session going on, I made it very clear that people needed to stay focused on certain pieces. And at some point, it all comes together. That's okay. that's all we're trying to uh, attempting to do. I would encourage you to share that, though, at some point in yes, the near future. Um, Mr. Brady, uh, Manchester Partners, can you tell me a little bit about that and your work experience? What is that company? What was uh, That was a company I had. 
That was a, uh, a company I had many years ago that I used to do uh, financial consulting and international business development work, work with small micro-cap companies. Can you pull so, the uh, mic a little bit closer to you, if you don't mind, please? Sure. I'm, I'm sure this one. Thank you. Yeah. That was a company I had, better, um, that I would uh, do pre predominantly uh, financial consulting services and a lot of international business development for small micro-cap companies, uh, consulting, et cetera. Okay, and then you went on to work with the Department of Commerce, I see? Yes. Yeah. And then the Arab Bankers Association, is that right? That's correct. And your role there was? Uh, executive Director and COO. Okay. And you were also a former member of the New Hampshire Legislature. Yes. You left that out in your... <laughs> yes, I was. I, I was a member of the... How long were you there? Well, just for one session, what, 2002, 2004. And then you went to work with the Department of Commerce after that? Uh, yeah, I transitioned out and uh, I went from Manchester. You know, that's a citizen legislature. So, I, so I had Manchester partners in the legislature. Sure. And then went, went into the administration. Okay. Thank you very much.